it's gonna be this. Um, in just literally a few a few words, so it's it's not prose as we know it. It's not poetry. Um, so I'll be reading just a handful of these aphorisms and pausing between one and the other because of course they're separate. So you need a few um, moments to reflect on, on on the words stated rather than just reading it as one is reading prose or or, or one poem straight off. Um, <clears throat> so I'll start with. Uh, I think the one that's most appropriate. Words exist to stimulate thought, not dictate dogma. The more thankful we are for not being at the bottom, the less resentful we get for not being at the top. It's very much about life's experiences and I think that when we actually express them in words it's almost like releasing uh, the depth of our own experiences um, words can actually be very very therapeutic because it sort of brings that experience to the forefront of one's mind small minds demonize Big hearts empathize. The path of least resistance also happens to be the path of least development. This is one that very often um, we tend to overlook it, so. Uh, for that reason, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Scorn is a form of abuse exercised by the privileged. Something very topical, bit of a cliche, but uh, <laughs> always very topical. Money makes for a good tool, but a bad toy. Something to distinguish many of the persons here in, in our audience. Um, <laughs> people like Natasha and I, who have a few more years on us. The impetuosity of youth is surpassed only by the cynicism of old age. One that's a bit topical considering it's a um, day of silence today. He who desires power is least qualified to exercise it. Again, this is one of my favorite. <clears throat> we envy others for what they have, yet we know not what they endure. Everybody helps a person with a broken leg, but nobody notices a person with a broken heart. Physical pain contorts the body. Emotional pain contorts the mind. The hardest rain falls in our hearts. <laughs> you want to hold it? <laughs> Whatever's com comfortable for you. No. Uh, well, the way the way I read poetry is together with the audience. So, so we 
will just involve you a little bit within this exercise, little exercise. So before we go into the, into the um, uh, reading, if we can just create some music together. So let us... And we'll go a little bit higher and a little bit lower again and down and let's try rubbing our hands as well so so the body can make all sort of noises let's just join in within this little music experiment and this is how Norman's actual show was called music experiment so within the music we will go into the poem called magic spell <laughs> join the pathway of fortune this is your chance to fly, giving you the power of unreachable heights. Can you hold it and keep it and keep yourself hooked to its eternal flame? Can you? Can you stand and glare at this staring light, shining light? Can you survive its magic spell that takes away everything you called yours or mine? Join the pathway of fortune. This is your chance to fly, giving you the power unreachable height. We find it in ancient Greeks, and we find it in ancient Malta, we find it in ancient Egypt. So within this book, we are actually going down trying to research the sounds. Um, it is a historical research, um, so it can uh, get lengthy as a historical research, but it's actually not, it, it's trying to find out within the sounds what is the uh, essence, the philosophy of the words. And we, was, we were looking at the, in the beginning, there was a word. And the word was with God, and you remember that. And that, within um, our own philosophy, then developed into two sets of sounds. One that is a female sound, and the other one that is a male sound. And we had suddenly two main philosophers that have started developing within this particular uh, complex and environment of uh, a development of human beings, psychology, applied, applied psychology, philosophy, and all the rest. And it's all there within the symbols and sounds of our ancestors. It's all there within the texts of um, ancient Greeks. It's all there within the ancient Maltese um, statues and symbols. It's all there within the spiral. It's all there within the experiments that have uh, been carried out 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago. And then when you go into this an archaeological discovery of what was happening 7,000 years ago, you get totally, totally amazed of how much of the uh, true development of the, of the thought form was actually um, advanced and how civilized the whole, the whole, uh, um, uh, the whole uh, Mediterranean was. And if that was the case, then you get really impressed by somebody like uh, 
priestess, uh, Syrian priestess, who have uh, created the first uh, liturgy and the first ever poem, because yes, there was a Syrian um, priestess that has actually created her first poem dedicated to God's sin or goddess sin. And then you go into the whole, whole uh, conservative versus liberal uh, debate of uh, what, would, what would be the male thinking versus female thinking, and what would be God versus goddess thinking, and what would be um, the, the, basically the key to our lives. Because if we come from a poor country, we go down to the south, and if we go to the rich, from the rich country, we go up to the north, and in the middle, there is this cross that each one of us as an individual lives. And what is this cross? And where, where is it within us? And how does that actually relate to music and Pythagoras and their way of uh, uh, thinking? And how did we, Europe, Mediterranean, humankind, uh, actually see this within the mysticism of music, within the mysticism of sound, within the mysticism of all the beings. So this is this is the book about uh, a search for truth, but the search for truth from the archaeological point of view. It is the book about the philosophy of sounds. So I think I took my the philosophy of sounds. One, two, three, go.